If you're watching this video, chances are you're thinking about getting an injection to help manage your arthritis pain. Maybe you've hit a point where pain meds and exercise just aren't doing the trick anymore. Well, in this video, we'll be diving into all of your burning questions about injection therapy for arthritis. We'll break down the three most common types, cortisone, hyaluronic acid, and platelet-rich plasma, and cover everything from what they do, how much it costs, and whether they're worth the investment. By the end, you'll have a clearer picture of what to expect and whether these treatments are the right choices for you. A common challenge for people with arthritis is getting stuck in a vicious cycle of chronic pain. When pain flares up, it's natural to move less or change how you move. But this can lead to muscle weakness because the muscles aren't being used as much. Weaker muscles means less stability in the joints, which leads to even more pain. And so the cycle continues. More weakness, more pain. To break this cycle, pain needs to be managed effectively. And once pain is under control, you can tolerate more movement, regain strength, and restore joint stability. So when exercise, physical therapy, and medication can't manage pain alone, injection therapy comes into play. Cortisone injections are one of the most common ways to manage arthritis pain. Pain. Cortisone is a corticosteroid, a drug that mimics cortisol, a hormone that your body naturally produces to handle stress and inflammation. When injected, cortisone goes straight to the source of inflammation, calming down those overactive inflammatory chemicals, which can lead to rapid relief from pain and stiffness. However, it's important to note that cortisone is a short-term fix. It's great in managing pain, but it doesn't address the underlying issue. In the long run, frequent cortisone use can actually make things worse. Research has shown that over time, Time, cortisone can accelerate the progression of osteoarthritis and lead to negative effects like weakening and even further degeneration of bone cells, which can cause fractures and joint deformity. So how much is too much? Well, it really depends on your joint's health, but generally, you shouldn't get more than three cortisone injections a year. The effectiveness of these injections can also vary based on the severity of your arthritis. They tend to work best for those with mild to moderate arthritis, but if your arthritis is more severe, you will likely see diminishing returns. In fact, in cases of advanced degeneration, cortisone injections might not only be less effective, but could also even worsen pain and degeneration. So in those cases, it's usually best to avoid them. Most health insurance plans cover at least part of the cost for cortisone shots. However, coverage can vary based on how many injections you need and whether your insurance company considers them medically necessary. For arthritis, it's usually straightforward for the doctor to justify the need for a cortisone shot. So it's typically not a problem unless you've had many injections. If your insurance doesn't cover them, you're looking at paying between $150 and $300 per shot. But no matter what, make sure to use the cortisone injection sparingly and as part of a comprehensive rehab plan. The aim is to manage pain enough to let you focus on other treatments that tackle the root causes of inflammation and help find long-term relief. That's where active rehab strategies like exercise, physical therapy, weight loss, and proper nutrition come into play. These methods help reduce pressure on your joints and lower overall inflammation. By combining cortisone injections with solid rehab programs and lifestyle changes, you can achieve more significant and long-lasting improvements in managing arthritis. Now, if you've been getting cortisone injections and are noticing they're not working as well as they used to, it might be time to explore other options. Visco supplementation or hyaluronic acid injections is often the next step in the injection therapy for arthritis. But since these treatments are usually not covered by insurance and can be pretty pricey, it's natural to wonder if they're worth the cost. So let's take a closer look at what this treatment does and what the current evidence has to say. Hyaluronic acid is a gel-like substance naturally found in your joints. It helps lubricate and cushion them, allowing for smooth movement and reducing friction between the bones. It's basically the WD-40 of the medical world. When injected into the joint affected by arthritis, hyaluronic acid is meant to replenish the natural lubrication that's been lost, helping to reduce pain, improve joint motion, and boost function. So unlike cortisone injections, which primarily address inflammation, hyaluronic Hyaluronic acid is designed to restore and protect the joint's natural environment. These injections are often recommended for people with mild to moderate osteoarthritis who haven't found enough relief from other pain management treatments and who are not candidates for surgery or would like to put it off even longer. But just like cortisone, hyaluronic acid injections are not a cure for arthritis or a fix to the joint damage. They're meant to manage pain and improve function temporarily, serving as a bridge to help you tolerate more active rehab approaches. Now you might be wondering if hyaluronic acid injections really live up to their promise. On paper, it sounds great, restoring lubrication in your joints to help them move more smoothly and reduce pain. But does it work in real life? Well, unfortunately,
Unfortunately, the research on hyaluronic acid injections has been pretty hit or miss. A lot of studies haven't shown much more relief than you'd get from placebo. In fact, the outcomes have been so underwhelming that both the American College of Rheumatology and the Arthritis Foundation have issued a recommendation against the use of intraarticular hyaluronic acid injections. This is because there's just not enough evidence to support their effectiveness. And when you compare hyaluronic acid injections to cortisone injections over a 10-year period, people who received cortisone injections were reported to have greater pain relief and were shown to be able to delay surgery longer. This is not to mention cortisone injections are a lot cheaper and often covered by insurance. But why are hyaluronic acid injections still popular, despite mixed recommendations and iffy clinical evidence? Well, it might have a lot to do with some savvy marketing and a strong direct-to-consumer push. If there's money to be made, companies are going to find a way to get it out there. And because these injections aren't covered by insurance, they can really hit your wallet, leading to big profits for those who offer them. Hyaluronic acid injections can run you $200 to $300 a pop. And since they're often sold in bundles, you could be looking at over $1,000 altogether. Now, there are still doctors that see some benefits in hyaluronic acid injections, especially for mild to moderate arthritis pain, based on their own clinical experiences and patient reports of relief. However, the debate continues news about how effective they really are when studied closely. While some studies have shown small improvements, it's important to note that what is considered mathematically significant on paper doesn't always translate to meaningful improvement in real life. If you're finding this episode helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share it with friends or family that might also benefit. And if you have questions or topics you'd like us to cover, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. A new method for treating degenerative joint conditions like arthritis has been generating quite a buzz recently. Recently. Platelet-rich plasma, or otherwise known as PRP therapy, falls under regenerative medicine, where doctors use your own tissues to help heal worn out structures like joints or tendons. But what exactly is PRP therapy and how does it stack up against other treatments? Well, let's see what the treatment is and if it really lives up to the hype. PRP is derived from your own blood. Blood contains red and white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. While platelets are designed to help with clotting, they also carry growth factors and proteins that help in healing. To create PRP, PRP, a small sample of your blood is drawn and then spun in a centrifuge to concentrate the platelets and plasma. This results in a mix that's packed with growth factors, which are then injected into areas of pain or damage with the hope of promoting healing and reducing discomfort. So unlike cortisone or hyaluronic acid injections, which are focused on managing symptoms, PRP aims to promote healing of the damaged tissue by kickstarting the body's natural healing processes. This is super exciting, right? If PRP delivers on its promises, it could be an incredible breakthrough for those dealing with arthritis. And early studies have shown some promising results, suggesting that PRP injections might help with pain relief and improve joint function. It sounds like a solid, non-surgical option for those struggling with osteoarthritis. Finally, something we can feel good about spending our hard-earned money on, right? Well, not so fast. Before you reach for your wallet, the treatment hasn't quite lived up to the hype yet. Despite the buzz, there remains more questions than answers, as research is still a bit all over the place. Different studies show some promise, but they often mix up different types of injuries, which makes it hard to pin down just how effective PRP really is for a specific problem. Another big issue is that many studies don't clearly state which type of PRP was used, because when it comes to PRP, there are different recipes utilized. This makes it tricky to figure out if one type is better for certain conditions than another. For example, some experts think that some formulations of PRP might work better for chronic tendon issues, while other forms could be more helpful for cartilage problems such as joint arthritis. But since there's no direct comparison in the research, we can't say for sure which one is the best. So in short, while PRP has some exciting potential, its effectiveness is yet to be proven. It can vary depending on the type and the condition being treated. More focused research is needed to clear up these questions and help us understand which PRP formulations are most effective for different issues. Right now as it stands, many professional organizations are being cautious about recommending PRP. For example, the American College of Rheumatology and Osteoarthritis Research Society have advised against using it for osteoarthritis. This is because the treatment's techniques and preparations are not standardized, as the dose for PRP in each treatment is uncertain. And given the current lack of clear benefits and the high cost, which can be upwards of $1,000 per injection, with many insurance plans not covering it, it's wise to hit the pause button on PRP for arthritis at the moment. With its mixed results and significant price tag, 
many doctors suggest exploring other proven treatments first. But if you're dealing with arthritis pain right now, waiting for research to catch up might not be an option. You're looking for pain relief today. So if you've got some extra cash and have already tried other options without much luck, giving PRP a shot might be worth considering. It's generally safe, and while it might not do much, there's a chance it could offer some relief. If you're curious and can afford it, why not give it a try? But don't forget, if you're getting these injections for arthritis pain, they're just a short-term solution for a long-term problem. They won't tackle other issues like flexibility and muscle deconditioning, which can lead you right back to where you started if not addressed. The best strategy is to use these injections to help you tolerate more active rehab methods like physical therapy, weight loss, exercise, and lifestyle changes. These approaches provide a more holistic way to handle what is often a systemic condition, leading to better long-term pain management and overall improvement in function. While I hope you enjoyed this episode of Physio Show, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all the tips and info about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.